Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hashem Ali Khan. So now in this video, I'm going to explain you about <coughs> gift received by an SSC. The gift received by an SSC, how much it is taxable, where it is taxable, all these things I'm going to explain you in this video. Already, currently the topic going on is unit number two, income from other sources. This is a very lengthy unit because until and unless the student is perfect on the provisions, he should not go to solve the problems. So again, in the last videos, I've explained you what are the items that will come under the head income from other sources. What are the provisions regarding dividend income, provisions regarding interest on securities, provisions regarding casual income, letting out of plant, machinery, furniture, family pension. All these things I've already explained in the last videos, last three, four videos. <clears throat> so if you have not watched those videos, I suggest you to go to the playlist of my channel. Select the subject advanced aspect of income tax, unit number two. Watch the starting videos, then definitely <clears throat> you can be able to understand. Now, in this video, I'm going to explain you about gift received by an SSC. <clears throat> so before starting the explanation, take a screenshot of the notes which I have written on the board so that you can make a permanent record of these points. Later on you can be able to refer and remember and you can excellently write in examination. Take a screenshot and then I will explain the points. Come on. Now I am going to start the gift received under section 56, subsection 2 and clause 10. This is the section in which the Income Tax Act has given the provisions regarding the gift received. First point, the gift received by an SSC is taxable under the head income from other sources. So what are the provisions? If an individual received the gift on or after 1st October 2009, Remember the date, 1st October 2009, the provisions of section 56, subsection 2, clause 7 are to be applied for the assessment year 2010-11 onwards. So actually the provisions are given on 1-10-2009 and if this provision was applicable up to, from 2010-11 to 11 onwards. But later on, the Income Tax Act has made the changes in 2017. In 2017, new provisions for gift received is, I mean, uh, applied by the Income Tax Act. Now we are going to study what are the new provisions according to the Finance Act 2017. According to new provisions under Section 57, sub 56, Subsection 2, Clause 10, gift received either in cash or in kind are taxable income with the exemption limit in few situations. In few situations, exemption limit is given. Apart from that, the gift received in cash or in kind, both are taxable under section 56, subsection 2, clause 10. Now, this section is applicable even if the property is purchased for inadequate consideration. Earlier, this provision was not there. Now, Income Tax Act says gift does not mean only without consideration. Even if a gift is given with inadequate consideration, that also amounts to gift. For example, a person has given a property worth rupees 10 lakh as gift. Complete, no consideration. That's a gift. So similarly, a person has given the worth value of the property is 50 lakh. But the person has... Uh, transferred the property for 10 lakh that is inadequate consideration that also amounts to gift according to the new provisions the person who is giving that uh, I mean property with a lesser consideration that also amounts to gift 
<coughs> for taxation purpose the term gift cannot be taken as receiving cash or property for no consideration or for a lesser value even if it is lesser value if a person gets the property that also amounts to gift the consideration paid shall be compared either the stamp duty or with the fair market value when the property is transferred with inadequate consideration or lesser consideration then how to find out what is the value of the gift we compare the consideration received with the stamp duty or fair market value so what is stamp duty first of all the concept should be clear the tax to be paid for obtaining or preparing official documents when the property is transferred from one person to another person documents property documents has to be prepared the so tax paid for making official document preparing official document when the property is transferred that is called stamp duty generally stamp duty is levied at the time of transfer of property from one person to another person so whenever immovable property whenever immovable property is transferred from one person to another person stamp duty will be levied now stamp duty depends on the valuation made by the government for the property to be transferred so the state government will calculate the stamp duty for the property for the property then provisions of section 56 subsection 2 and clause 10 what are the provisions regarding gift first one gift received in cash or check or draft if the gift received during the previous year exceeds 50,000 exceeds 50,000 then whatever is the amount of gift that is the value of income taxable example Mr. A gift uh, gifted 1 lakh rupees to Mr. B the 1 lakh rupees is received in the form of gift by Mr. B so in the B's computation that 1 lakh rupees is fully taxable under income from other sources gift received from A so if the value of the gift is more than 50,000 exceeding 50,000 then it is taxable the whole amount is taxable if the gift is given below 50,000 or up to 50,000 it is not taxed exempted the gift received up to 50,000 is not taxed over 50,000 whatever be the amount full amount is taxable without giving basic exemption limit for example Mr. A has given 75,000 rupees gift to Mr. B then how much is taxable in the hands of B 75,000 you should not take 75,000 minus basic exemption 50,000 25,000 is taxable no complete 75,000 is taxable in the hands of you then second one immovable property now here we have to be careful regarding immovable property immovable property received as gift without paying any consideration and st stamp duty value is more than 50,000 then stamp duty value is the value of the income if immobile property is given as gift by one person to another person without any consideration example Mr. A has gifted a immobile property worth rupees 10 lakh worth rupees 10 lakh without any consideration to Mr. B without any consideration to Mr. B then income tax act says find out what is the stamp duty value the stamp duty value is the perquisite is the income in the hands of the recipient the recipient is Mr. B the value of the property the stamp duty value of the property is 50 lakh so complete 50 lakh rupees is taxable in the hands of B if no consideration is passed suppose if immobile property is received for inadequate consideration sometimes Mr. A has gifted has transferred the property to Mr. B for a nominal consideration actually the value of the property is 50 lakh but Mr. A has transferred the property to Mr. B for only 10 lakh rupees the actual value 50 lakh but Mr. A is charging only 10 lakh rupees inadequate consideration in that case income tax access <coughs> stamp duty value exceeds 110% of consideration safe consideration we have to check 
if the stamp duty value is 110% of the consideration then value of the income is stamp duty value minus consideration paid the value that income the value of the income is stamp duty value minus consideration paid that is the value of the that is the value of income taxable income in the hands of the recipient of gift now mobile property mobile property like shares bonds etc gold shares etc so fair market value of the property when uh, when the gift is given in the form of mobile property like shares gold ornaments etc income tax access find out the market value whatever is the fair market value that is the value of the gift taxable gift now mobile property is received as gift for consideration sometimes the donor the person who gives the gift has uh, transferred the mobile property for a consideration for example the fair market value of the gold ornament is 5 lakh rupees but mr a has given this 5 lakh rupees of gold ornaments only for 1 lakh rupees to mr b mr b is the recipient so mr a has given 5 lakh rupees worth of gold for only rupees 1 lakh inadequate consideration in that case the value of the gift is the difference that means value of the income is fair market value minus consideration paid the fair market value of the gold is 5 lakh rupees consideration paid by b to a is 1 lakh so 5, 5 lakh minus 1 lakh 4 lakh rupees is the taxable gift in the hands of b that's all so these are the provisions given under section 56 subsection 2 class 10 regarding the gifts now summary points gifts received either in cash or in kind up to 50,000 is exempted from tax very important rule you have to remember if the gift is given by Mr. A to Mr. B up to 50,000 gift is there it is not taxable in the hands of B B is receiving the gift B is receiving the gift so it is not taxable if the gift amount is up to 50,000 Huh? If it is more than 50,000, it is taxed. Next, in case of immobile property, stamp duty value is considered when the following conditions are satisfied. Whenever immobile property is gifted, then in that case, we have to compare with the stamp duty value. Then, st stamp duty value exceeds 110% of sale consideration. Mr. A has transferred the property to Mr. B at a lower consideration less consideration in that case income tax act says calculate 110 percent of the consideration receipt stamp duty value exceeds 110 percent of consideration receipt or the difference between the stand, uh, stamp duty value and the consideration is more than 50,000 the difference between the stamp duty value the stamp duty value and the consideration is more than 50,000 if these two conditions are satisfied then if the above conditions are fulfilled the difference between stamp duty value and consideration shall be the taxable gift in the hands of the recipient now in the following situation gift received in cash or in kind is fully exempted from tax income tax act has given some situations where the gift received is completely exempted not at all taxable whatever be the limit whatever be the limit the 50,000 rule will not apply in the following situations which situation cash or property received as gift on the occasion of the marriage of the SSC at the time of marriage of the SSC any gift received either in cash or in property the gift received on the occasion of marriage of the SSC it is completely exempt from tax it is completely exempted for example Mr. X Mr. X at the time he is the SSC at the time of marriage he got the gift from his father-in-law the gift amount is let it be 10 lakh rupees income tax act is complete 10 lakh rupees exempted because this 10 lakh rupees is received by the SSC at the time of his marriage secondly 
cash or property received as gift under a will if a person got the gift in the form of cash or property through a will of the person through a will of the person again the gift received is fully exempted now cash or property received as gift under inheritance normally the inheritance property will be passed from uh, ancestors like father's property will pass on to son then son's property again will pass on to grandson like that so if a person got the cash or property in the form of gift through inheritance it is also completely exempted cash or property received as gift from local authority sometimes the local authority will give the gift in the form of cash or property that is also exempted from tax gift received from a relative is fully exempted again very important provision income tax act says if gifts gift is received from a relative then also the gift is completely exempted now the question arises who will be called the relative the income tax act has given the provisions regarding the relative the meaning of the term relative for this provision so who comes within the ambit of relative first spouse of the individual spouse means husband or wife from husband point of view wife is the spouse from wife point of view husband is the spouse so if the gift is given by the spouse of the individual for example the ssc is mr x the ssc is mr x so mr x got the gift from mrs x or mrs x has given the gift to mr x or mr x has given the gift to mrs x in that case they are relative so any gift given by husband to wife or wife to husband is fully exempted from tax next one brother or sister of the individual if the gift is given by the brother or sister of the individual ssc mr x is the ssc he got the gift from his brother or from his sister completely exempted relative the third one brother or sister of the spouse of the individual brother or sister of the spouse of the individual for example mr x the got the gift from the brother or sister of his wife that then also it is relative fully exempted brother or sister of either of the parents of the individual that means mr x parents of mr x then the brother and sister of the parents of mr x has given the gift to mr x that is also exempted last one any lineal ascendant or descendant of an individual if the gift is received from the ascendant or descendant of the individual then also the ascendants and descendants will come within the ambit of relative then it is fully exempted so these are the cases where the gift received is completely exempted from tax remaining gift is taxable if the value of the gift is more than 50000 if the value of the gift is less than 50000 it is not tax these are the provisions regarding gift received according to section 56 sub section 2 and clause 10 inshallah we'll take up the next uh, video next topic in the next video